We're going to start by looking at what we call a single trait cross, or just a two by two Punnett square. And so we're going to keep on going with Mendel's um, Mendel's pea plants, and we're going to look at flower color. And so here we're seeing that one pea plant has purple flowers and has a heterozygous genotype, which means capital F, lowercase f, or one dominant, one recessive. And the other pea plant has white flowers and is homozygous recessive. And so what we've done so far is we've set them up here on the sides. There's the um, capital F, there's the lowercase f, and then there's our homozygous recessive parent. And it doesn't matter whether we um, put this one across the top or down the side. We could flip this and get the same results. So here we've actually um, done the Punnett square, and you can see that we've taken this um, capital F and crossed it over to here, this lowercase f, we've crossed it to here, and we've done that for each of these, matching them up. And so here's the outcomes that we're looking at, and these represent the possible outcomes of the offspring. So this isn't what's going to happen, it's just what's probably going to happen. So we can look at what's called the genotypic ratio, and that would be looking at the ratio of heterozygous um, offspring to homozygous recessive offspring, which is going to be a two to two. You can see over here we've written it down. And anytime we can reduce down to um, a lower number, we can do that. So let's go ahead and change that to a one to one ratio. Um, then we're going to look at the phenotypic ratio, which is looking at what are the traits actually showing. And we can see that it's actually the same as the genotypic ratio. It's two purples to two whites. So our second example is going to be a monohybrid cross. And a monohybrid cross means that both parents are heterozygous. And you can see here that we've got um, dominant allele and recessive, and then dominant allele and recessive. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to cross these together. So here's our outcomes. And so we're going to start off by looking at the genotypic ratio. The genotypic ratio, this time we have three different genotypes in the um, offspring. We've got homozygous dominant here. We've got two heterozygous and then one homozygous recessive for a one to two to one ratio. The phenotypic ratio is actually what Mendel saw during his um, experiments, which is that he saw a three to one ratio of dominant to recessive traits. So next we're going to try one with two traits, and so this would be called a dihybrid if both of the parents are completely heterozygous. And this time we're going to look at um, two different traits, and so one of them is going to be the color of the peas, and one's going to be the, the shape of the peas. And so here, um, yellow is going to be dominant to green, and round is going to be dominant to wrinkled. And so each parent is going to have the same genotype, which is going to be this right here. And notice that we have to do four letters now because we're dealing with two different traits. So the hardest part about doing these and the part that students most often mess up as they're doing um, these dihybrid crosses is setting up the um, possible gametes of the parents. And in this case, they're going to both be the same since both parents are completely heterozygous. So what I'm going to do is start with this um, with uh, this genotype, and I'm going to essentially come up with all the different possible combinations of Ys and Rs. So for example, and this also helps that if you've um, taken algebra and you know what FOIL stands for, firsts, outers, inners, lasts, this is a good way to make sure that you don't um, leave any combinations out. So I'm going to do the first of the two um, letters. I'm going to do for this one here, I'm going to do a capital Y and a capital R. And then I'm going to do the outers, which in this case is going to be a capital Y with a lowercase r. Then I'm going to do the inners, which is a lowercase y and a capital R. And then the lasts, which is lowercase y, lowercase r. And actually, since both parents are the same, that means that it's going to be the same across up here. So I'll just write those in. So when we cross all these together, um, we want to keep your letters together, meaning always keep the Ys together and the Rs together. So for example, in this very bottom right-hand box, we're going to have little y, little y, little r, little r. And I don't really have enough room to write in here, but you'll see it in the next slide when it's filled out. I'll just do a couple more random ones so we kind of get the idea here. Um, in this box right here, we're going to have capital Y, little y, capital R, little r. So notice we always put the capital letter first too um, in each of those combinations. So let's go ahead and look at the full, um, the fully done Punnett square. 
All right, so here's our Punnett square once it's been all crossed for us. And so now um, what we need to see is we're not gonna look at the genotypic ratio because there's a lot of different genotypes here. So for example, this genotype right here is different than this one, which is different than this one, which is different than this one. So we would come up with a lot of genotypes. So typically with these, we're not gonna um, look at the genotypic ratio. We're only gonna look at the phenotypic ratio. And so um, what you should hopefully see here is is that you can count up nine peas here that are going to have both dominant traits. So they're gonna be both yellow and round. And you can even tick them off as you go. So for example, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that is where we're getting that number right there, is nine um, both dominant traits. Then let's look at looking at the dominant of one trait. So let's look for yellow peas because that's the dominant color. But now we're going to look for the um, recessive of the second trait, which would be wrinkled. And what we should be able to see are one, two, three. So that's what that three represents. Then we're going to go look at the other combination of having one dominant, one recessive. So the recessive color here was green, and the dominant trait for the shape was round. So you can see here that there's three. I'll put stars just so we keep differentiating here. There's three that are green and round, so that's what that stands for. And then there's one final one right here that has both recessive traits, and that's the one that we're seeing right here. So in terms of the ratio, nine represents those that have have both dominant traits. Each three represents the combinations where it's one dominant trait and one recessive trait, and then that final one out of the 16 possible combinations is going to be fully recessive. So one out of 16 would be the, the probability that you'll have um, offspring with both recessive traits. So in this last section, we're going to talk about how um, sexual reproduction increases genetic variation. So um, first, though, it helps to understand asexual reproduction and how it doesn't um, increase genetic variation. Asexual reproduction is um, reproducing with just one parent, and this is essentially where the parent makes copies of itself. So having identical offspring is not advantageous for the organism or the species because that means that if something can kill one of those organisms, it can probably kill all of them. So having genetic variation actually ensures our survival as a species. So the major advantage of sexual reproduction is that it does give rise to genetic variation within a species. And so a good example of that is during meiosis, um, during metaphase one, we have Mendel's law of independent assortment. And if you need to go back and review that, it's in the B video in this series. And so in independent assortment, that means that the homologous chromosome pairs are sorting themselves independently of other pairs during metaphase one. So that can lead to many different possible combinations of offspring or of gametes um, during meiosis. Also during um, sexual reproduction is the mixing of alleles as gametes join during fertilization. So um, that means that you've got a unique egg combining with a unique sperm and creating a a third unique organism. And then the other thing that we talked about in class was crossing over during prophase one, and this is going to shuffle up the homologous chromosome pairs, and that's going to ensure that none of the eggs of a female and none of the sperm of a male are going to be identical. So here's crossing over during prophase one. This is showing how um, homologous chromosomes swap segments of DNA or genetic information. And what this is going to do is take the chromosomes that you've inherited from your parents and it's gonna make them your very own. That's what's gonna get passed on to your offspring. Here's Mendel's law of independent assortment. And you can see that depending on how the chromosomes line up in metaphase one, that's gonna determine um, whether or not um, you know, each of these different outcomes happen. And then finally, this ties in with um, prophase, or sorry, this ties in with crossing over during prophase one, and it's called genetic linkage. But basically, the closer that genes are located together on a chromosome, the more likely they're going to get inherited together. And that's because it's more likely that these two genes down here are going to get crossed over together as a pair um, instead of comparing something like gene A to gene C. So the closer they are together, the more likely they are to be inherited together.